Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I'll be unboxing the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 gaming laptop and giving you a complete review. There are multiple variants of this laptop. In India, it starts at about 80,000 rupees. It's available both online and offline and price varies based on some of the internal specifications. By the way, we have the high-end variant with us right now. This laptop is available in two colors, Moonlight White and Eclipse Gray. We have the Moonlight White but I personally prefer the grey colour. Now here's the box. On the front we have the ROG logo, it says Republic of Gamers. On one side it has the colour option names, on other side there are some specifications. On the back it has a model number along with some more specifications. Now let's unbox it. Once we open it up, first we have the caddy case itself, it looks quite premium. And there's another box which actually has the laptop and the box looks pretty cool with the overall black and white design. Now let's open it up. First we have the laptop with a sticker with highlighting features like the world's first 7 nanometer x86 mobile, mobile processor, anime matrix LED, Dolby Atmos and so on. We'll come back to that later. Besides the laptop we also get some documentation and what seems to be like a comic book. I'll come back to that in a minute. Next we have a 180 watt power adapter and a cable. Now let's put everything aside and come back to the comic book. It says light it up, enter the anime matrix, yes it's definitely a comic book, there's some story going on and you can read it when you buy it. Now coming back to the sleeve, it looks and feels premium and it's pretty light. It says the choice of the champions on the front zip. For the sleeve, attention to details is great. Now this is how it looks on the inside, there's a slot or separator which can hold some papers or even a tablet I guess. Inside the front zip, we also have a huge compartment. You can put some pen drives and hard disks in here. Now let me just try it with the laptop. It's a snug fit and pretty light to carry. Now let's come back to the laptop and let me remove this plastic cover. Now this is how the laptop looks on the front and at the corner we have the branding. Now let's have a physical overview. On the lid it has anime matrix which has 1215 mini LEDs across half of the lid. Each LED emits a wide glow with 256 levels of brightness control. Over these LEDs, you can import GIFs or other graphics, build custom animation frame by frame, or you can just type text message with different fonts, or have a visualization reaction for music or other audio. You can do all that from the Armor Crate software. Now for the ports. On the right side, it is a Kensington lock followed by exhaust outlet, two USB 2.0 ports and a USB Type-C port. On the left side, we have exhaust outlet, charging port, HDMI port, USB Type-C port, followed by the audio jack. On the front, it's completely plain. And on the back, it has the exhaust vents on either sides, which by the way look pretty cool. And in the middle of the vents, it says Zephyrus. At the bottom, we have the air vents, some specs, some information. And towards the bottom, there are speakers on either side. It also has rubber foot pads on odd sides for some extra grip. It also has a pretty good ergo lift hinge mechanism where it lifts the laptop and helps it stay cool. It also helps in enhancing the bottom firing speakers. Now once we open the laptop, we get to see the 14 inch IPS panel with WQHD resolution, 60Hz refresh rate and it's also Pantone validated to get accurate colors. On the sides, it has pretty thin bezels giving it 85% screen to body ratio and thanks to the smaller dimensions, WQHD panel has high pixel density than a typical 4K desktop monitor. So the display is actually pretty good. As for the bottom part of the laptop, it has a plain look, it feels nice. At the top we have 3 LED indicators for power, battery and disk usage. On one side there are 4 hotkeys for volume down, volume up, mic off and a dedicated button for armor crate. On the other side we have the power button in a different design which also acts like a fingerprint scanner. More on that in a minute. Below that we have the complete backlit keyboard followed by a trackpad. And at the end we also have two speakers on either corners. Now coming back to the fingerprint power button, G14 is the first gaming laptop to integrate a fingerprint sensor into the power button. And the first gaming laptop in the world to use single sign-on power button. When you try to power on this laptop with the correct fingerprint, it briefly caches your fingerprint saving it to authenticate when the windows is ready to log in. This allows the user to directly log in instead of entering the password later. If it has multiple users, OS automatically detects the right account related to the fingerprint. 
This is definitely a great feature and I wish other laptops offer it too. Now these are the complete specifications. There are multiple models with different specifications, but you can go up to AMD Ryzen 9 4900H with 8 cores and 16 threads built using the 7 nanometer FinFET fabrication. As for GPU, you can go up to NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q. As for RAM, you can go up to 32GB of RAM and 1TB of SSD. Finally, this laptop weighs 1.7kg and has a thickness of 17.7mm, which is pretty sleek for a gaming laptop. Finally, here's a quick look at the laptop without the back cover. It has a red color motherboard. These are the dual speakers, SSD, RAM, these are the two fans and the four thermal vents. Now for the review, let's start with the design and build. This is the moonlight white color. Unlike other laptops, it has a dot matrix design with that back LED lights, which is its main selling point. It definitely looks much more cooler and minimalistic than your regular beefed up gaming laptop. And that's something I really like about the overall design. As for the weight, it just weighs 1.7 grams and for a gaming laptop with beefed up specs, it's pretty great for traveling or carrying around for gatherings. Overall, I don't have any complaints in terms of design and build. As for the display, it has a 14 inch IPS panel with WQHD resolution and yes, it comes with 60 years refresh rate. It might be a little downside for gamers, but for normal users and especially for content creators, they're gonna love this display. It's pretty sharp, color reproduction and brightness levels are good and viewing angles are also great. It has an anti-glare coating so it also cut down on most of the reflections. Now as for the speakers, it has two speakers above to fire high frequency sounds and two woofers beneath them to offer deep bass amplified by ErgoLift design. You also get Dolby Atmos to enhance immersive experience with virtual surround sound for both headset and speakers. And Dolby Atmos definitely makes a difference, both on headset and speaker. Here's a quick preview. Speakers are pretty good and they are pretty loud, especially for a small room with less ambient noise. For gamers, I would recommend a headset. It's not sufficiently loud enough. As for the keyboard, I really like it. It's a backlit chiclet keyboard. It's very well built. Keys are pretty soft and has a sufficient key travel of 1.7mm. Even with the softness, there's a clicky feel to it. It's comfortable to use, especially typing feels really good on this keyboard. Even the trackpad is pretty good, just just work right out of the box and it is sufficiently sized. Beneath the palm rest, it has honeycomb reinforcements to strengthen the high traffic area. They added the strength with minimal material to keep the chassis light. It also uses magnesium aluminium alloy deck for fingerprint resistance to give it a fresh look and it does feel premium and comfortable. Now as for the performance, it's pretty good. Everything was seamless. I'm not really a gamer, but I did some gaming and the gaming experience was pretty smooth. Everything else seems fine, but the fan noise as usual is slightly annoying. You can just change the settings in Armor Crate to silent mode and you'll have less fan noise. It affects the performance a little, but overall because of the SSD and high specs, it is still pretty smooth. Now for the battery life, ROG created the first gaming laptop capable of being powered by a traditional adapter and a USB Type-C adapter. For regular usage like browsing, working on documents or watching videos, which was everything except gaming. Battery life was good. I got about 4-5 to five hours of screen on time, which is pretty good. Now USB Type-C charging works with this laptop, but it affects the performance. So if you want high performance, maybe you want to play games, then you have to plug in a regular power adapter. So guys, to conclude, if you're looking for a laptop for gaming or content creation, or even for regular usage with beefed up specs like a gaming laptop, but with a much cleaner and minimalistic design, then you can definitely go for this laptop. Out of all the recent gaming laptops that I've unboxed, personally, I like this Zephyrus series the most. So guys, what do you think about this laptop? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you're planning to buy it, link for that is in the description. Do check it out. I'm Nikhil from Grady Tech signing off. Have a nice day.